Liza, I think you said you came in a taxi. Well, what if I do? I've got a directed taxi to anyone else. You have it, Liza. And you can ride as many taxis as you like. You ride up and down and around the town in them every day. Mr. Higgins! You're tempting the girl. It's not right. You should think of the future. Nonsense. I'm not thinking of the future. And you haven't any future to think of. No. Do as this lady does. Think of other people's futures. Think of taxis and chocolates and gold and diamonds. No. I don't want no gold and diamonds. I'm a good girl, I am. You shall remain so, Eliza, under the care of Miss Pierce. And you shall marry a man of the guard, the beautiful mustache, the son of a marquis, who disinherit him from marrying you, but will relent when he sees your beauty and goodness. Excuse me, Higgins, but I really must interfere. Mrs. Pierce is quite right. If this girl is to, is to put herself in your hands for an experiment in teaching for six months, she ought to know what she's doing. How can she? Look at her. She can't understand anything. Besides, do any of us really understand what we are doing? If we did, would we ever do it? Very clever, Higgins, but not to the present point. Miss Doolittle. Yeah. There. That's all you'll ever get out of her. Oh. No use explaining things. You're a military man, you should know that. Give her her orders. Eliza. You ought to live here for the next six months, under the care of Mrs. Pierce. And you will learn to speak beautifully. Now, if you're good and behave yourself, then you will be rewarded with a bed and a proper place to sleep and food and money by tax with and chocolate. If you're not an idol, then you'll sleep in the kitchen with the black beetles and be rolled by a stick with Miss Bagger's pierce. Now, at the end of six months, you will be taken to Buckingham Palace in a carriage, beautifully dressed. And if the king finds you out, then the police will take you to the Tower of London and your head will be cut off as an example to the other presumptuous flower girls. If you are not found out, however, then you'll be given a reward of seven and six pence and a place in a flower shop. If you refuse this offer, you'll be considered the most wicked and ungrateful girl, and the angels will wait for you. Now, is all right, Mrs. Pierce? Have I explained myself plainly and clearly, Pickering? I think you had better let me speak to the girl properly in private. I don't know that I can take charge of her or consent to this arrangement at all. Of course I know you don't mean her any harm, but when you get what you call interested in people's accents, you never seem to think or care what happens to them or you. Come with me, Eliza. Yes. Take away, Miss Pierce. Oh, you're a great bully, you are! I won't stay here if I don't like it. Well, let nobody wall at me! I never asked to go to Buckingham Palace, so I didn't. I was never in trouble with the police, not me! I'm a good girl, I am! Don't answer back, girl. You don't understand the gentleman. Come with me. Well, what I say is right! I'm not going near the king, not from down the head, because I, I'm a good girl, I am! I'll have to put you here. This will be your bedroom. Oh, I couldn't sleep here, missus. It's too good for the likes of me. I should be afraid to touch anything. I ain't touched it yet, you know. You must make yourself as clean as the room, then you won't be afraid of it. And you must call me Mrs. Pierce, not Mrs. God, what's that? Is that where you wash clothes? But it's not a copper, I call it. It's not a copper, Eliza. This is where we wash ourselves. And I'm going to wash you. You expect me to get into that thing and wet myself all over? <laughs> not me. I knew a woman who did every Saturday night, and she died of it. <laughs> Mr. Higgins has the gentleman's bathroom downstairs. He takes a bath in it every morning in cold water. Oh, he's made of oil. If you're to sit with him in the kennel, be taught you have to do the same. They won't like the smell of you if you don't. But you can have the water as hot as you like. There are two taps. Hot and cold. Oh, I couldn't. I dare. It's not natural. It would kill me. I've never had a bath in my life. Not what you call a proper one. Don't you want to be clean and sweet and decent like a lady? 
You know, you can't be an ass girl inside if you dare to go outside. Ow! Now stop crying. Go to the room and take off all your clothes. And wrap yourself in this and come back to me. Get the bath ready. I can't! I won't! I'm not used to it! I've never taken off all my clothes before! It's not right! It's not decent! Nonsense! Don't you take off all your clothes every night before you go to bed? No! Why should I? I should catch me there! Of course I take off my skirt! Do you mean that you sleep in the underclothes you wear in the daytime? What else have I to sleep in? Well, you'll never do that again so long as you live here. Put your proper night dress. Do you mean lying awake, changing into cold things and shivering out the night? You want to kill me, you do! I want to change you from a frowsy girl into a clean, respectable one. But sit the gentleman in the study. Now you're going to trust me and do what I tell you. I'll be thrown out and sent back to your flower basket. <coughs> but you don't know what the cold is to me. You don't know how I dread it. You'll beg me to be cold here. Put hot water bottle in it. Now, off with your undress. Oh, no, if I only knew what a dreadful thing it is to be clean, I wouldn't have come. <laughs> I didn't know when I was well off. I... Ah! Are you a man of good character or women are concerned? Have you ever met a man of good character or women are concerned? Yes, quite frequently. Well, I haven't. I find that the moment I let a woman into my life, she becomes jealous, exacting, suspicious, and a darn nuisance. And I find that the moment I let myself make friends with a woman, I become selfish and tyrannical. Women upset the whole show. You find that they're driving at one thing and you're driving at another. At what, for example? Well, I suppose it's like this. You see, the woman wants to do her thing, and the man wants to do his. And so, they both drag each other on the wrong track. One wants to go north, the other south. And the result is, they both go east. Though they both hate the east wind. So, here I am, informed old bachelor, and likely to remain so. Come, Higgins, you know what I mean. If I'm to be in this business, I shall feel responsible for that girl. Now, you must promise me that no advantage is to be taken over a position. Of that thing? Sacred, I assure you. You see, she'll be a pupil, and pupils would be impossible to teach unless they remain sacred. I've taught scores of American millionaires how to speak English. The best-looking women in the world. I'm seasoned. I might still be a block of wood. They might still be blocks of wood. It's all right, Mrs. Bitt. Yes, I just wish to trouble you with a word, if I may, Mr. Higgins. Don't bend that. I'd like to keep it as a curiosity. Have it carefully, sir, please. I'd promise not to burn it. But I'd better put it in the oven for a while. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, what have you to say to me? Am I on the way? Not at all, sir. Mr. Higgins, will you please be very particular with what you say before the girl? Of course. I'm always particular about what I say. Why do you say this to me? Not at all, sir. Not when you've mislaid anything or get to let someone patient. 
Now, it doesn't matter before me, I'm used to it, but you really must not swear before the girl. I swear? I never swear. I did test the Harris. What the devil do you mean? That's what I mean, sir. You swear a great deal too much. Now, I don't mind your darning and blasting and what the devil and where the devil and who the devil... Mrs. Pierce, the language from your lips, really. <laughs> There's a certain word I must ask you not to use. She used it herself when she began to enjoy the bath. It begins with the same letter as bath. She knows no better. She learned it on her mother's knee. But she must not hear it from your lips. I cannot charge myself with ever having uttered it, Miss Spears. Except perhaps in moments of extreme and justifiable excitement. Only this morning, sir, you applied it to your boots, to the butter, and to the brown bread. Oh, that. Mere alliteration, Mrs. Pierce. Natural to a poet. Well, sir, whatever you choose to call it, I beg you not to hear you let her repeat it. Very well, very well. Is that all? No, sir. We will have to be very particular with this girl's personal cleanliness. Quite right, most important. I mean, not to be slovenly about her dress or untidy and leaving things about. I'm going to call it to your attention, Vickerin. Take care of the pence, the pound will follow. Is as true of personal habits as it is of money. Yes, sir. Uh, then might I ask you not to come down to breakfast in your dressing gown? At any rate, not to use it as a napkin to the extent you do, sir. And if you would be so good as not to eat everything off the same plate, and if you would remember not to put the poured saucepan out of your hand and onto the clean tablecloth, it would be a better example before the girl. You know, you nearly choked on the fishbone in the jam only last week. I may do these things sometimes, absence of mind, but I assure you, Mrs. Pierce, I do not do them habitually. And by the way, my dressing gown smells most damnably of benzine. No doubt it does, Mr. Higgins. What if you all wipe your fingers? I'll wipe them in my hair in the future. I hope you're not offended, Mr. Higgins. Not at all. Not at all. Is that all, Mrs. Pierce? No, sir. Might I ask to borrow some of those Japanese gowns you brought from abroad? I really can't put her back into her old things. Yes, anything you like. Is that all, Mrs. Pierce? Yes, sir. That's all. No, Pickering, that woman has the most extraordinary ideas about me. I mean, here I am, a guy, different sort of man. <laughs> Never able to really feel grown up and tremendous like other chaps. And yet she finds me bossing and overbearing. I can't account for it. If you please, sir, the trouble's beginning already. There's a dustman downstairs, Alfred Doolittle. Wants to see you. He says you have his daughter here. I say. Send the black guard up. Very well, sir. Higgins, I'm afraid he may not be a black guard. Nonsense, of course he's a black guard. But whether he has a nods, I'm afraid we may have some trouble with him. If there is trouble to be had, it is he who have with I, not I with him. Besides, we'll get something interesting out of him. About the girl? No, I mean dialect. Oh. Do little, sir. Professor Higgins? Yes, good morning. Sit down. Morning, Governor. I came about a very serious matter, I did. Raised in Hanslow. Mother Welsh, I think. What have you to say to me? I want my daughter. That's what I want to say. Of course you do. She's your daughter, isn't she? You don't suppose anybody else wants to, do you? I'm glad to see you have some spark with any feeling left in you. Now, she's upstairs. Take her away. What? Take her away. You don't suppose I'm going to keep your daughter for you, do you? Now, now is this reasonable? Is it fair to you to take advantage of a man like this, Governor? The girl belongs to me. You've got her. Why don't you come in? Your daughter had the audacity to come to my house and ask me the teacher to speak properly like a lady. Now, my housekeeper and this gentleman have been here the whole time. How dare you come to my house and blackmail me? You put her up to it. No, Governor. Then how did you know she was here? Don't take a man up like that, Governor. The police shall take you up. This is a plot, a plot to extort money. I'm going to telephone for the police. Have I asked for a brass farthing? I'll leave a judge on my ear. I'm always so worried about money. Then what did you come for? What will our man come for, Governor? Be human. Alfred, did you put her up to it? 
So help me, I did not, Governor. I take me by the oath I ain't seen the girl these two months past. How did you know she was here? I'm wanting to tell you, if you let me get a word in. I'm willing to tell you, I'm waiting to tell you, I'm wanting to tell you. Pickering, this man has a certain natural gift for rhetoric. Listen to his wood notes wild. I'm willing to tell you, I'm wanting to tell you, I'm waiting to tell you. Sentimental rhetoric. It's the wealth strain of him. It also accounts for his dishonest the mendacity. Oh, come Higgins. I'm West Country myself. Now, how did you know the girls here if you didn't send her yourself? Oh, it was like this, Governor. The girl took a boy in a taxi on a jump. Son of a landlady he is. Well, he hung about on the off chance of her giving him a ride home. Well, when she found out you was waiting for her to stay in, she sent him back for her luggage. I met him on the corner of Endo and Longacre Street. Public house, yes? Four man's club, Governor. Why shouldn't I? Do let some time.